Now that we've seen config files, we can talk a little bit about versioning. In a previous video, I showed you that if you do not sign your assembly, you do not give it a public key token, then .NET will only search for the name when trying to resolve an assembly reference. Let's refresh our memory by taking our cal here that we've seen several times. I'm going to compile cal version 1, version 1, C-sharp compiler. Please target the library. The output file will be farm.dll. The input file will be main class.cs. Hit enter. And now we have our farm.dll. Let's compile against this farm. Control K C. Control K U. Save this file. C sharp compiler, please reference the farm.dll, the one we just created. And the input file will be main class.cs. Hit enter, clear the screen, list the contents of the directory. We now have main class.exe, which depends on farm.dll. Let me use a better color for that. All right, but the only thing it depends on is the assembly named farm. We didn't strongly name farm. Uh, let's run main class.exe. Main class.exe, you see, moving version one. Let's make version two of the farm. Control KC, highlight all of this. Control KU. I'm going to say version 2, version 2, save, up arrow a few times until we see C-sharp compiler target a library. Output to the farm DLL again, main class.cs. And now when I run main class.exe, we see moving version 2 instead of version 1. And by default, you may think, yeah, of course I want my compiled executables to bind to the latest version, but that might not always be the case. In general, new versions could break backwards compatibility. I could call this big cow. I do not give cow. Big cow, control shift to U. And this is a new improved cow class. Instead of having a cow, we call it a big cow and everything's pretty much the same. Let's let's uh, compile that again. C sharp compiler, target a library, output form DLL, main class.cs and now when I run main class.exe, we bind or try to bind farm, and that's what was loaded. But then once the farm assembly is loaded up, it says, hey, uh, I can't find that cow, right? You told me to use a cow. I'm trying to find a cow. There is no cow. What do you want me to do here? So by default, what .NET does with if your assembly is strongly named is search for the original version that you compiled against. Let me prove that. Let's bring cow back in here, change this to version one, version one, clear the screen, uh, list the contents of the directory, erase main class. Let's start over again. Right, I'm just going to start over here. Farm.dll. I'm going to erase both of those files. Start out with a clean slate, make sure this file is saved. C sharp compiler, please target a library. The output file will again be farm.dll, farm.dll, but I, I want to specify key file this time, thus strongly naming my assembly. We will reuse Jamie's key.snk, strong name key that we've seen in previous videos. The input file will be main class dot cs. It looks like I actually put an s right here. Let's hit enter. We grind good. List the contents of the directory. We now have a strongly named farm. We have compiled against version 1 of the farm. Control KC, bring in main class again. Control KU, uh, save that file. C sharp compiler, reference the strongly named farm.dll, which means we're compiling against the assembly version 1 of farm. And the input file will be main class.cs. Hit enter. Clear the screen, list the contents of the directory. We now have main class.exe, which relies on farm assembly, assembly with a version of one and a public key token of the public key token represented by Jamie's key.strongname key. Run main class. It works. No big deal. No surprises there. Okay, now let's have a little fun. I'm going to comment this out as we've done before. Let's recompile this code. Control K. U and the I will again change the version, which we did previously. But when we did this previously, I'm hitting up arrow to do this auto completion. We targeted a library output farm, but we did not sign the assembly. Thus, farm did not have a strong name. Recompile, we're just fine. List the contents. There's farm DLL, but the only thing that's different between 
the version of the assembly for the farm assembly that we compiled before it was version one. All right, main class.exe relies on version one, but this is no longer version one. It is version two. And before we saw that .NET didn't care, it would bind against it. Let me run main class.exe and it bombs. It's saying, I cannot load this file. I'm trying to find farm version one. All right, I want version one here. That's important. The public key token is important as well. And I, I can find an assembly with that public key token right here. But this is version 2, not version 1. I, we've, we've, we've got an issue. Now in the next video, I'm going to show you how we can how we can redirect. We can do that using the config file, as I, I've shown you before. But just for tickles, just for tickles, let's make a directory called farm. Let's uh, recompile farm back to version 1. All right here, version one, version one. Let me up arrow until I get to target library farm. Sign it. Yes, I can run main class dot exe. Main class dot exe is happy now. I can locate that assembly with version one. Now I want to move farm dot dll into the farm subdirectory. Clear the screen. List the contents of the directory. So our farm assembly version one is residing in this directory folder, however you want to think about it. Main class.exe relies on that farm assembly there. And we, we've seen this before. Let me rerun main class.exe. Main class.exe locates the assembly in there. Good deal. Now, let me, let me uh, change this to version 2. Version 2. Uh, recompile. Okay, up arrow. Target library, farm assembly, Jamie's key, all that same stuff. List the contents of the directory. And now we have version 2 sitting right here and version 1 in the subdirectory. And we've talked about how with a strong name, .NET will first look in the GAC. If it can't find the assembly in the GAC, then it will look in the local folder or the directory where the executable is running. And right here we have a farm assembly, but it's the wrong version. And then .NET should theoretically probe into uh, subfolders. Here's a subfolder called farm, and there is version 1 there. It could find it there. But it actually turns out, if I run this main class.exe, it says, I cannot find the assembly I'm looking for. All right, once it locates the first assembly, that could possibly be the correct assembly, in this case, farm.dll. It, it actually opens this file and tries to identify whether it has the same name, version, public key token, and culture. And it fails doing so, because this is version 2. Then the probing terminates. Right? It will not look in this farm subdirectory. Now, chances are you're not going to set up something this complex and stupid. But, hey, it's the end of the video, and most of you tune out by now anyway, so I thought I'd introduce that. Next video! I'm going to show you how to tell .NET how to use the latest and greatest version. You can do that without having to recompile your executable. And we do that using a config file, and we've seen config files in the previous video.